Philosopher Stone in the chat room said, it does not matter. Whoever has the most money wins. That's not always the case. But that's, that's not always the case. I mean, shit, look at Hillary Clinton. She had the most money. She didn't win. Okay. Okay. She had the most money and she did not win. That's not the case. Uh, but no, 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 we need, we need you all to win, uh, to run. And we need you to win. Uh, and the good news is in Virginia, the House um, of Delegates, uh, I haven't, I guess I could check on the update right now as we speak, um, because it was uh, hinging. The, the balance of power was hanging on 55 votes that were unsealed and hadn't been counted. And this is after I think they needed 15. They needed 16 seats in the uh, Virginia House of Delegates for the Democrats to take power back. Uh, and they got 15 all just straight out. They got 15 uh, during the election. That was the la election last week. It's like dog ears over here. Um, just give me a second to type that in House of VA House of Delegates. Oh, thank you, Google, for reading my mind. Um, uh, we missed it. It's over. OK, so I guess I could finish telling you the story anyway. So they were looking for uh, there were 55 ballots that hung in the, the balance in power. Um, absentee ballot. OK, so let me let's, let me read this real quick. Seconds. The, the morning after the election day, the left control of the Virginia House of Delegates in doubt, the U.S. Postal Service delivered 55 absentee ballots to Stafford County Registered Greg Riddlemonster. Wow, Bill Moser. The ballots which arrived, this is in the Washington Post. The ballots which arrived at 10 a.m. Are they really going to go through the entire description of what like the, the, the mailman was wearing? Like, just get to the point. Um, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. Okay, bottom line. I'm not processing. I'm just reading. Uh, the bottom line is this. Um, the race was so close in Virginia that 55 votes uh, was potentially going to swing it. I'm, I'm going to fix my language so I can finish telling the narrative and go to bed. Um, 55 votes was um, close enough for, for it to swing. And we often talk about like we, we, our vote doesn't count. And it seems like the most cliche thing in the world. But two things I know from Virginia, from the Virginia race. Number one the most unlikely people who ran won and they won against establishment people. They won against people with money. They didn't have any money over there. They were out there holding up paper signs, vote for me, you know, we'll, we'll legislate for food kind of shit, you know, and they won, they got out there unorganized and they won. You know why? Because they've seen and they've stared into the abyss and they've seen exactly how bad it could become. Here's the difference between you and establishment Democrats. Establishment Democrats see how bad things can become and they're comfortable staying right where we are. Never, never realizing or never caring the fact that where we are is literally hanging on the precipice, looking over into the abyss. Like that's where we are. And they don't feel the urgency. They feel like this is a safe space because it's worked so well for them individually over the last few years. You and I, on the other hand, know damn well that we're, the reason we have Donald Trump is because we've been comfortable on the precipice of, 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 of destruction, what neoliberalism has done. And I'm not using neoliberalism here as a token uh, attack, pejorative against Democrats. I'm saying it's a very specific economic system that is set up to benefit the upper middle class and the, uh, and the, and the wealthy in, in a way that in a way that convinces us that all we have to do is work a little bit harder, right? It, it's, it's, that's the very basic, that's a, like a very minimalistic definition of uh, a, a very rudimentary definition of neoliberalism. And the difference is, is that the Democrats are not, the establishment Democrats, the people that some of you need to run against, they're not going to critique the economic system. They're not going to go much further than medic, you know, talking about Medicare for all, because they think all that has to be done is if we just get if we just get the crazy Republicans out of power, then everything will be fine. Not knowing that you can get them out of power, but they'll be back, bitch, in about eight years. And then they're going to go harder, further and even crazier than before. And so there is merit to what people on the far left who are saying that, you know, the answer for fascism is socialism. 
right? There are merits there, and but we are finally at the place where we can actually discuss socialism publicly, democratic socialism, winning offices. And so, whereas it is going to be better for, a, for American society for us to stop staring into, or like literally falling into the abyss of Donald Trump and the Republicans who are trying to, they're not satisfied with the dystopia that we currently live in. They, they want it to be uh, uh, the, the Gilded Age over again, even though we've already, we've already crossed the threshold of the level of inequality that existed in the Gilded Age. The Republicans are like, that's not enough. The Republicans are like, they literally want to get rid of every safety net, the, everything that was ever done during uh, the New Deal. That is their fucking goal. And you know what? I'm sorry. It is better for us to stand on the edge of the abyss than to jump headlong into it with the Republican Party. But we don't even have to stop there. We don't have to be satisfied there because there's a new wave of Democrats, of progressives, of people who think and are willing to fight and willing to hold to their principles and willing to do something big for the people. And you know what? It's not enough for us to sit here. God damn it. I'm gonna run for office. I'm gonna run for office. God damn it. You know, it's not enough for us to sit here and just talk about it anymore. We need people. We need you in power. We need you to get out there and run, run and win your city commission first. Cause once you won that, once you win that, it's, it's a smooth sailing from there. You build the relationships from there. You're going to have to take some money because we, uh, the only question is, is the money going to corrupt you? And if you listen to me on a regular basis, and if you're here, cause you probably shout more at me to be more progressive than I'm shouting at you, chances are you won't let the money corrupt you. Now, if you make me, make me out to be a liar, then, then the cops are gonna have to come get me cause I'm coming after you. But the point remains is I would trust the future of America in the hands of people like you who are both principled, but also rational and who actually want to operate in the system to make the system better. I would trust the future of America in the hands of people like you more than I would Democrats who are perfectly com comfortable. Just, you know, it's like a, a tornado has just landed our house on the edge of a cliff and the Democrats are looking around like, yeah, this is fine. This is, this is not bad. Meanwhile, you got the trolls, you got the gremlin dudes in, in the, in the white house and in the Congress who are like, no, no, we don't want the edge of the abyss. We want to leap into the darkness. And then the rest of us who know better. We're sitting on YouTube at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, talking about what we should be doing and not quite doing anything yet. Um, and so I'm gonna put a challenge out to every single one of every person listening to me now, at least Google and find out what local race you could qualify for. Doesn't mean you're gonna sign up for it, but Google it and then make a plan in your head of how you can actually do it. Now out of the, I don't know, I don't know, about 2,000 people who download, listen, and watch. Uh, that's about 3,000 who download, listen, and then watch on YouTube. Out of that, if we only have three people in our audience who actually do it and, and actually win, then I would have done my job.